Hey everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So uh, last week I was walking around the property and we are uh, taking a look at the uh, 30 acres that I bought, which is outlined uh, on this uh, Google map uh, by the uh, boundaries here. And I finished up the hay field. So uh, today's discussion, we can talk, talk a little bit more about um, things that will be important to you when you're looking over a piece of land to find a home site. So uh, the one thing I would like to say right off the bat is perhaps don't build in the most beautiful spot you find because it'll change the beauty in that. And uh, I did find a really beautiful spot in this particular piece of property. And uh, all, all, I have decided to keep it preserved as a beautiful spot, right? A, a little sanctuary or park. So, uh, so uh, the spot that I found would be the most beautiful. Uh, I'm going to keep the most beautiful. And I found another spot. So as I walked the, uh, the property, I divided it up into grids. So there's 30 acres here. They've got the parking lot or the driveway rather. And then, uh, you know, uh, dividing the 30 acres with a line down it mentally and a line across it. And, uh, then I took a look at the build sites, you know, do I want to overlook the, uh, you know, a stock pond and, and that stock pond can, uh, is in my agenda to, uh, to see if I could make it not brown, which is the official color of water in Texas. So, uh, whenever there's a, a, a big storm, it'll just bring all the debris into these little stock ponds. And, uh, you know, they're not self-sustaining, uh, they need help. And, uh, so, and the cattle drink out of them and muddy them up. But, um, so uh, last week's episode, I finished watching walking the hay field and, you know, I had parked the Camaro up there and, you know, I found some coyote bones and I found some deer bones and I found some interesting thing. A little cow <laughs> ran me out of his spot uh, in the area. Uh, but this week I'm going to continue with the uh, the remaining 15 acres. That's uh, the cedar thicket here. So uh, but some of the things that you'll be asked right away. Uh, now, this this area doesn't have a 911 address, so I, I went and found the property and I'm using the uh, coordinates to to talk about it. And so when you buy a piece of property, one of the first things you're going to have to do is get a 911 address, which uh, is usually your emergency services, but your county might be different and uh, whatever, whatever country area in might be different. But for me, it was uh, the county services. So uh, once I closed on the property, I submitted that right away so that I have a 911 address. I still don't have it yet and I need it for deliveries and I need it for, you know, to, it, all of the different things. Uh, when I bought the tractor, they needed a physical address out there. So uh, this was difficult because they're not going to go by uh, coordinate numbers right on a map. But for the moment, this is helpful. And uh, Google Maps is your friend, right? I can zoom in and get a real good feel. You know, they're dated. The uh, the, uh, the maps are a little dated, so you don't know what you're getting uh, a look at. But for me, all these trees have been cleared out, and I'll see this repeated. Uh, another question that you're asked is, uh, what is the... Uh, is any of your property in a 100-year plane, a uh, floodplain, or a 500-year floodplain. And so uh, if you go to, uh, and I'll move my face here, if you go to FEMA, that is where you can look up your, your flood maps. And uh, you, the viewer here, when you take a look at it, will open up this area here where then you can see uh, if your property is on uh, a floodplain or not. And uh, uh, I obviously wouldn't want to build uh, any, put a build site anywhere where any of these uh, hundred year fingers come up to gobble up my property. Uh, but fortunately, uh, let me zoom in here, put me center. So this is uh, the 30 acres that I bought and just the floodplain just stops right there. So uh, I was able to submit that to the insurance company that no, indeed, uh, here's the pictures that I'm outside of the uh, floodplain. And uh, I will be in any, almost anywhere that I build in here. I, uh, that uh, is not, I don't think that's my property. This uh, green field right here has a fence that runs all the way down. Uh, I still haven't walked all of it to find all of the uh, survey markers. And when I do, maybe I'll put in a, a concrete um, memorial post for the survey. I'm, I'm unsure of that. So you have your FEMA that you can go to and you can get your map there. And then you can also go to the um, Argus and uh, uh, they have all kinds of maps that you're looking at there, um, including things like earthquake maps and whatnot. So, you know, I can bring up an image map and then I can see uh, more clearly what's going on through, through the, uh, through that 
particular platform. Um, and the, the, some of these tools, they have a, the ability for you to even uh, measure points. Uh, let's see if I've got one of those right here. Uh, uh, you can uh, interact with the map, uh, the ge geological survey. So, uh, you know, I wanted, this is the topography. So uh, I wanted to see where my high points were on my property. So each one of these bands represents 10 feet. So, you know, the four, uh, 460 feet, 450 feet, 440 feet. And you see the property, there's a 430 marker. Uh, that's the little stock pond. And that's the wet weather creek that runs through there. Right about there is the cedar. Uh, and this is fun because, you know, you can uh, put a waypoint. Like I could start one at the start of my driveway. And then uh, I'm going to change the driveway to up here. Well, I know that's 1,300 feet. Um so then I can click add another point, you know, and then I, I let's say I want to go around the stock pond uh, with a driveway, which I do. So I could slowly uh, build my distance here and find out how, how big my drive is going to be and how much I've committed to you. So the how to's of when you walk your, your land and finding a site, it's, it's up to you, but you need to know your elevations. You need to know where your floodplain is because you just can't build and don't build even in the, even in a 500 year in this, uh, this day and age, just don't build anywhere near that. And so um, you have your FEMA maps um, and FEMA also does earthquakes. So you can get an earthquake map for that. Um, you have uh, under the geological survey maps, you have your topography. Um, oh, there is all kinds of maps in here. I can hit related maps and you know, it would just open up all kinds of maps for me. Um, and, uh, the fun one in there, of course, is the distance marker. So now I know my driveway will be 3,200 feet, more or less. Um, so, uh, and, and kind of look at that. Where are you going to run your driveway? Any obstacles? Uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to stay out of the mud as much as possible. And so I've changed my drive to, to be able to look a little more at the uh, stock pond as it come in. Because I'll put a fountain there, I'll clean it up, or I'll make it nice. Uh, these are the kind of things that you'll need to look at when you're doing a site survey and then the sunlight because I'm going to do solar, but that's important to you. You want windows if you're in a cold climate facing your south hemisphere, right? In a hot climate, you might want to change things up. So you'll need to get a, a lay of the land, the north, south, east, and west. And your cell phone's a great tool to have as well for all of those. Download your little uh, apps on there. Uh, take some videos. Do some thinking. Uh, don't just necessarily pick the first site that you see. Walk around and think a little bit. Um, uh, again, I found a, a really ideal site, and you'll see this in this week's video. In addition, I'm taking an inventory as I walk of uh, trees because I'm planning to cut down and log my own timber. Uh, this will be a real, real, real exciting adventure. But the things you'll need, you'll need to, once you close on your house, you'll need to get a 911 address, uh, a delivery address. Um, and even if you get, once you get the 911 address, that doesn't automatically register you with like the U.S. Postal Service. So once I have that address, then I have to go to U.S. Postal Service and register that address. And then as you're walking the property, uh, take advantage of tools that are available to you online. You know, the you, you've got your Google Maps, uh, which is really accurate. And then you have your Arsys, uh, which is uh, another extension of um, uh, your world mapping systems through FEMA. Um, your geological survey folks, uh, FEMA flood maps and earthquake maps, as well as your topography maps found in the U.S. Um, geological surveys. I'll put links to all of these things at the bottom of the survey because how do you take a look at your site? And these are so handy uh, if you're doing a build that you'll want to have those available. And uh, anyway, the rest of this video is the other half of my walk across the property. And I'm making quick decisions. I'm making quick decisions. So I'm, I'm walking around and I'm deliberately looking for homestead. While I'm doing that, I am putting a toe in the dirt just to get an idea if it's sandy loam or clay uh, because um, I'll need to make sure I can put a septic in. And I'm hoping that my guess is a valid because I'm going to bring in shipping containers super fast and I might be a little bit ahead of my uh, permitting for my um, uh, septic. I'm not too concerned because I know in that area that it is mostly sandy loam and a septic should be fine 
no matter where I put the, the containers, but I could also be in trouble and end up having to do a lift or something like that. And uh, that would just be luck of the draw. But anyway, so uh, keep that in mind. You'll need to do a soil test for your, um, your septic service, as well as uh, in, the, in the area, I was taking a look at the depth of other people's wells. And uh, the water is found just 58 feet down, but everybody's well is almost 500 feet, so 10 times deeper. And I suppose that's because the water is dirty. Uh, but um, these are the things you'll need to gather up for your um, uh, for your walk. In addition, I have my survey already. Uh, I'm out walking around and I haven't found any survey markers, but just visually I can see the survey mostly follows the fence line. Um, in Texas, if a fence in encroaches a little bit over the, uh, the property line, it doesn't give you the property. Uh, I think that's uh, maybe true in some places, you know, supposedly squatter laws. If you mow a place for a certain amount of times, it belongs to you or your fence encroaches on the neighbor's property for a certain amount of time, it belongs to you. Uh, that kind of nonsense doesn't happen in this county. Uh, that wouldn't matter if my fence is a little over or their fence is a little over. Uh, but it would be nice to know, right? And good, good fences make good neighbors. But I don't get to keep somebody something just because I, I squat on it here in Texas. The, the title and warranty deed is the title and survey and warranty deed. So um, all good things. But uh, I'll put these links in there when you do yours. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, and uh, this is Steve for Thousand Year Home, and thank you for joining me.